honor mothers today, a day we call Mother's Day. I remember Jesus on his dying cross honored his mother by making sure she was looked after by the Apostle John. This poem is entitled Blessed Mothers. Blessed are the mothers who love God, for their children shall not be ignorant of their Creator and His plans concerning them. Blessed are the mothers who love the Word of God, for their children shall know of the way, the truth, and the life. Blessed are the mothers who love to pray for their children, shall feel the power of prayer, and many shall find salvation. Blessed are the mothers who love to give to the cause of Christ, for their children shall become supporters of the kingdom of God. Of God. Blessed are the mothers who love to fight life's battles bravely, with a strong and steadfast faith in God, for their children shall know where to find strength in time of need. Blessed are the mothers who, when they are old and gray, can look back upon memories with no regret and can say, I brought my children up in the fear of the Lord. Theirs are the mansions in glory. Author Unknown Good morning. What a privilege it is for us to be here again. We are here again, praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? We thank God for this opportunity just to be here to give Him praise and to worship Him. For him. Truly God has been good to us, and we cannot find enough words to express our gratitude to our God. We just want to take a minute here and say Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers in Barbados and to our congregation. We want to let you know that you are special, you are a masterpiece, you are handpicked by God, you are loved, you are a person of extreme and significance. So again, Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers. Let's pause and have a word of prayer. Eternal God and Father, how much we appreciate your goodness towards us. But since we last met, there's so many things that have happened, so many lives have been snuffed up, but we are here. And we are glad, oh God, that you allowed us to be here because we have a message for somebody out there. Thank you, Father, for sparing our lives. Thank you for your provision continually. And Lord, all we just want to say right now is thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We come before you today, and there's just one thing that we want to say.
But we just know and we understand that our God is our strength. It doesn't matter what we're going through, what we're facing. He is our strength. When we can't find it, no other place or in any personal thing, we can look to Jesus. He is our strength. Hallelujah.
Good morning, saints. This morning, as we come to sit around the Lord's table, we want to remember Jesus Christ, his coming, his burial, and his resurrection. And in so doing, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This morning, we'll be reading from the New International Version, verse 23, starting from verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's jump down to verse 28. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. So this morning as we come, we want to examine ourselves and we are examining ourselves to see if there's any sin. The word says in 1 John chapter 2 verse 1, My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. In the chapter before, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. So when we sin, we examine ourselves. We go to God, we confess our sin, and we trust God, not only to just forgive us, but also to purify us from all unrighteousness. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sin to each other and pray for each other, so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. This morning, as we approach God's throne, to sit at his table, to partake. Let's examine ourselves. But don't let's wait until we are going to partake to examine. The word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you feel the test. So, Testing and examine ourselves is an ongoing practice. We don't have to wait until Sunday mornings to examine ourselves in order to partake. We examine ourselves every day, every minute. We practice examining ourselves to make sure that we stay within God's will. And if by chance we do sin, the scripture says, 1 John chapter 2 verse 9, that we have an advocate and he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. That's because Jesus Christ died on the cross for each and every one of us. So this morning, let's observe these emblems, recognizing that there is no sacrifice other than Jesus Christ that could pave the way for us to become joint heirs with Christ. We remember that it was because Jesus came willingly and sacrifice himself. He came willingly into Jerusalem and he was greeted as a king. And then a couple of days later, they treated him like if he was a monster. We remember what Jesus went through for us. And this morning, we want to remember that it is only because of his love, his sacrifice, that we can partake. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for your Son. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sin. Father, we thank you, dear God, for his sacrifice, for his willingness. Even though he asked the cup may pass, he still went. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, dear God, for your plan that you, you made even before the foundations of the earth because you knew that your creation man would fall. But like the loving God you are, 
You didn't just create us and leave us to wonder, leave us to guess. You, you made a plan, and that plan involved your son, Jesus Christ, coming and dying for our sins in the fullness of time, fulfilling all of the scripture that had been before, fulfilling the prophets and what they said would come, and fulfilling the law, bringing around a new covenant, a covenant which includes every single man, woman, and child on the earth. Father, we thank you, dear God. I pray that, Father, that we would continue, dear Father, to recognize that you, dear Father, are our strength, that you, dear Father, are the reason that we can even live and breathe. Father, we come this morning only because you have allowed it. And we thank you, dear God, for the opportunity that we can come and that we can remember the reason for our for our very existence, the reason for our salvation. We thank you, dear Father, for your love. We pray these things in Jesus' name as we partake. Amen. Thank you. 
invite now Sister Sharon will come and she will bring our scripture. This is a wonderful day for us to celebrate our God in terms of worship. The message is the unchanging God. I want to continue from where I left off last week. But before I do that, let's just pray. Father, we give you thanks for these moments we're in. Thank you for your word. Your word is indeed a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. You told us that if we hide your word in our hearts, we will not sin against you. And it's not our desire to sin. It's our desire to know more about you through your word. So as your word informs us, we'll be able to live better lives before you. I ask that as we send this message forward, that those who would listen will come to a place where they recognize the importance of accepting your son Jesus Christ. And in the end, they will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Father, we thank you. Do what you will in these moments to transform lives and minds and hearts. I will pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We're talking about an unchanging God. I want to continue from where I left off last week. We were talking about God, some attributes of God, aspects of our Father, our Heavenly Father. How He loves us. How He sent His Son Jesus Christ to die for us. And how someday He is coming back to take us to be with Himself. So this morning, we want to deal with the idea an unchanging God. I change not. That's what we're talking about. The fact that God does not change. And this unchanging God deserves our love, our adoration, our praise. Because it is due to Him. So, go with me to your Bibles and turn to our first scripture reference. Psalm 119 and verse 89. Psalm 119 and verse 89. So you turn with me to Psalm 119. Let's get the scripture reference so that we can read it. God is an unchanging God. And as we speak about this particular topic, we will speak that he is a God whose word never changes. What he says, he means. And what he means, he says. That's the God whom we serve. The point is that the psalmist makes the reference that God is a God who does not change. 
His word is settled in heaven. And because his word is settled in heaven, then it comes to pass. That's what we're talking about. That's the word of God that we're talking about. Change is one of the most important aspects that happens in our life. Change. Change is a present reality in our lives, all of our lives. Every one of us face change in our lives. Change will bring us to a place where we grow. We may grow in the process, but we grow and we learn in the face of all the changes that will come about in our lives. Change will come sometimes suddenly, like the effects of the coronavirus on our lives, and change will come subtly and quiet when we don't know. See, change will also come severely, like the pandemic has taken away so many different lives. Millions of persons have died as a result of this pandemic that took over the world. Change may also come savagely, like a ravenous wolf come in and kill, take out its prey without any kind of mercy. So all of us face change just in our lives. The universe itself is filled with changes. The scientist says that the universe is changing from order to disorder. Every transformation of energy is accompanied by a loss in the available energy for the future. Did you hear that? Every transformation of energy is accompanied by a loss in the availability of energy for the future. So what they're saying is that the energy level in the world is being depleted every single nanosecond that we live. So how do we counter that? How do we come to grips with something like that? In other words, our universe is running down. Like something running out of steam. Resources are beginning to be scarce. The world we live in is rapidly changing. You and I know that. Everyday news reports are focusing on some new change that has taken place or occurred in the world. We are currently under lockdown, really, from a virus that has come and compromised every single aspect of our lives. And scientists and all kinds of other persons, medical doctors, everybody is panicking because really there is no end in sight that they want to tell us. Some new changes are occurring in the world. So the question that we need to ponder this morning, is there anything unchanging? Is there anything that will not change? Since we are in a world that is in the process of changing every nanosecond, is there something that is stable that we can truly rely on? We need to go to the Word of God. Because everything is changing and everything is transitory. So let us go to the Word of God and understand from the Word of God that even though there are changes taken on uh, the current status that we want to experience in life and changing everything that we hold fast to, those things that were constant are under change. We are experiencing a kind of change that we have no control over. You and I can set our clock and we can get up in the morning. And if we are supposed to get up at 7, we can get up at 7. We set the clock, it alarms, we get up at 7. It only changes if we change it. So we are always and we are accustomed to changing things for ourselves. But when change comes so dramatically and we are not in control of those changes, then we feel 
powerless. Almost the whole population across the world find themselves in a state of helplessness. And helplessness brings on a sense of hopelessness. And I've been told that the last thing that a person loses before they die is a sense of hope. Hope is what keeps us alive. So the question is, is there something or someone that we can depend on that does not change? I introduce to you that there is. There's one called Almighty God who never changes. Do you believe that this morning? Our God never changes. The psalmist in the Psalm 102 from verse 12, he says, But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. You will arise and have pity on Zion. So God is enthroned forever and ever and ever. He isn't moving. He isn't going anywhere. An unnamed psalmist wrote this psalm. It's a prayer of the afflicted when he was faint and pours out his complaints to Almighty God. This is a man who is in trouble, like many of us are in terms of the current season that we are in. Is there some kind of life preserver that he can have, that a person can hold on to when it seems like you are going under, when everything is folding up? Something stable, something reliable to hold on to, something sustainable in a world that is fading. There is. And Psalm 102 and verse 12 tells us, But you, O Lord, are enthroned forever. You are remembered throughout all generations. Because God has been the God of the Israelites, the Jews, and he provided for them. He is Jehovah Jireh, their provider and all provi our provider also. In verses 25 through 27, the psalmist goes on. Of old, you laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. You will remain. They will wear out like a garment. You will not change. They will change like a robe, but you will never pass away. That's what the psalmist tells us about our God. Our God is reliable. He is unchanging. He is the one that we depend upon in every season of our lives. That's the God we are talking about. God is immutable. Immutable simply means incapable of change. It means that he is perfect. It means that he is always consistent in who he is and what he does. He created all things. Things that he created change, but God himself does not change. God has no beginning. God has no end. He cannot change. And that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful precept that we can stand upon. Our God never changes. He reminded them in Malachi chapter 3 and verse 15 that he is the God who is righteous and just and he does not change. He says, for I, the Lord, do not change. That's the God that we are speaking about. That's the God that we surrender our wills to. A God who does not change. Israel, God, God's immutability, as it were, 
not only brought about Israel's discipline when they went wrong, but also guaranteed her continual national existence. That's the God who brought them into existence and the God who says, I will be with you. I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, God proves himself to be the unchangeable God to Abraham, who declared to Abraham, I will give you a child in your old age, and this child shall be the one who will produce the seed, the seed, the seed, and that seed is Jesus Christ, who is the Savior of the whole world. So when trials um, invade our lives, what do we do? We begin to think that God has gone on holiday, that he has taken a break. And James tells us in James chapter 1, 16 and 17, that when we go through these severe trials, and think that God has abandoned us. God has not abandoned us. That he is right with us in the midst of the trials. He says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. He says, my word and my will for you will never change. So the created things change. You and I change. The world changes. But our God never changes. Our creator does not change. His gifts always turn out to be good because he is a good God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from where? It comes from above. It comes from the Father of lights. That is God Almighty. God can give nothing but the best. Let me say that again. God can give nothing but the best. So whatever God has given to you is the best that he could in the moment that you are in. Because to give too little, you're going to grumble. And to give too much, you're going to be spoiled. So we need to understand that God knows best what to do. He never changes. So, so that, with that in mind, we need to understand too that the Word of God also never changes. The Word of God never changes, never ever changes. It is forever settled in heaven. The Word of God is unchanging. Because God himself is unchanging, the Word of God itself is unchanging. So that's the God that we serve, a God who does not change. And when he speaks the word, it comes to pass. His word is already settled in heaven. So even before it reaches us, it is already settled. His word is able to perform exactly what he sends it out to perform. Do you believe that this morning? What has God spoken about you? What has he said to you? What well, have you read from the word of God that you need to superimpose upon your particular situation that you find yourself in? God's words will always come to pass. Also, we need to understand about this God that we serve is that not only can he give us what is best and nothing but the best, not only is he the same savior that he always was, and when we are in trouble, when we are in a situation where our lives might be threatened, we can come to our God, who is a God who comes to the rescue of his people. But also, the plans of God are unchanging. The plans of God are unchanging. Forever, 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 throughout all the ages, according to Psalm 33 and verse 11, God's plans for us are good. He says to his people, I will be with you. I will be with you. Even when they were in Egypt in bondage, and Moses went to him. God says, I've got this. I've got this, Moses. I've got this. These are my people. He said to Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let 
my people go so that I can, they can come to me and they can worship me. And Pharaoh felt the wrath of God because he dared to say no to God. He even asked, who is that God you're talking about? And God says, oh yeah, I'm glad you asked. I am the God. I am the God. I created you. I gave you life. And I can take you out when I want to take you out. Throughout all the ages, forever means throughout all the ages. Psalm 33 and verse 3. We're going to read this. 33. And we're going to read a couple of verses from 10 through 11. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the people. And this is the verse, verse 11. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen as his inheritance. What a wonderful statement about our unchanging God. We are blessed because of our God and what he has promised to us through his son Jesus Christ. And now we are benefiting from the blessings of God. Oh, we are tremendously blessed. We are still alive. We have the, had the restrictions that were placed on us released somewhat. And life is going to get back to where it was. And people will be more conscious of the fact that it only takes a second for systems to change. Oh, we thank God that this morning his counsel stands forever. Whatever he says he's going to do, he is going to do. His words always come to pass. We also need to, to understand from the word of God that this same God is a God who never rescinds on his word. Whatever he says always comes to pass. In Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, in chapter 40 and verse 8, we read a statement from God that makes us wonder. Verse 8 says, The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our God will stand forever. Is there anything that will stand forever beside God? God's word. What has God said over you? What promises have God made to you? God has made tremendous promises to us, especially those of us who have come to the Lord Jesus Christ and we are his children. He said he will always provide for us. He said we will not go hungry or lack. He said he will be always with us because he is the shepherd and we are the sheep of his pasture. So Isaiah says in verse 8, he says, the grass withers, yes, and the flower fades, yes, but the word of our God will stand forever. God is unchanging. He never changes. He never changes. He never ever forgets or forsakes his own. And when Isaiah says that, over in the New Testament, in Hebrews, in chapter 6, we read these words. Chapter 6, from verse 17, we read these words. The writer writes, So when God desired to show more convincingly the heirs of the promise, the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath. So that by two unchangeable things that I tell you that God does not change, by two 
unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. He who, he who have fled for refuge may have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and a steadfast anchor of the soul. A hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. What God has spoken about us, what God has promised us, he cannot lie. He cannot go back on his word. God is not a man that he should lie. Or could lie, not a son of man, that he should repent. But we, we get the sense out of this particular scripture from Hebrews that our God, through Jesus Christ, is continuing to look after our needs. As a high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ stands in the sanctuary before the Father and intercedes on our behalf. Whatever requests we have, whether we think it is too hard or whether we think it is not enough, He hears it. And He takes our request to the Father and our Father answers us in a way that is in harmony with His will for us. In Isaiah chapter 46, 9 and 10, God says, My purposes will be established and I will accomplish my good pleasure. That's what he told his people. That's what he told the Jews. And that's what he's speaking to us. God will establish or confirm and accomplish his good pleasure in us. No amount of satanic oppression or opposition can change that. Hallelujah indeed. It doesn't matter how the enemy comes. It doesn't matter how he speaks to our minds. It doesn't matter how he accuses us. God says that his purposes shall be established and he will accomplish his good pleasure in our lives. Not only in our lives, but his good pleasures for us. Are you experiencing God's good pleasure? Are you? Do you know that every single waking moment and sleeping moment of the day, God is working out his good pleasures? And every morning you and I wake up, we should give thanks to Almighty God that he woke us up by his good pleasure. The knowledge of God is also unchanging. That's another thing that does not change. In the book of Acts, in chapter 15, when the Apostle Paul was brought before the leaders in Jerusalem, and they were saying all kinds of different things about him, and some didn't want to accept him as an apostle. Listen to what James says in chapter 15 and verse 18. 15 and 18. This is what James says. James looked at them and chapter 15 of Acts and verse 18 and let me go from verse 16. After this I return and I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its, its ruins and I will restore it. 17 says, this is a remnant of mankind. I may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who make these things known of old. And, and because he was a minister to the Gentiles, and he was making a case for the Gentile believers to be accepted into the family of God. He had strict opposition from the council in Jerusalem. And he had to refer them to scripture that was already written. That God is a God who does not change. 
God is a God who accepts every single man, woman, boy or girl from any race who accepts the Lord Jesus Christ into his family. So James had to defend the Apostle Paul because the others couldn't understand how he could go to the Gentiles and carry the gospel message. Myopic, that's what they were. So God is a God who is unchanging in knowledge. God knows everything. He is omniscient. God is also immutable, unchanging. So what does that mean to you and me? That this God that we serve is immutable or unchanging. You wouldn't want to put your lives in the hands of a switcher. A person who says one thing and, and, and does another thing, would you? You won't want to place your whole life in the hands of a person who you know doesn't keep their word. Would you? I don't think so. So we understand that our God keeps his word. He's a God who keeps his word. In the scriptures we read, turn with me to Jeremiah. Jeremiah in chapter 33 and verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Jeremiah 33 and verse 3. And this is what Jeremiah says. God says, call to me and I will answer you. And I will tell you great and hidden things or marvelous things that you have not known. God is a God with secrets that he wants to reveal to you and I. Secret things, the secret things belong to God. And at the appropriate time, he will release them or reveal them to us to empower us to walk successfully through this life. Jesus in St. Matthew in chapter 7. St. Matthew in chapter 7 and verse 7. This is what he says. Chapter 7 and verse 7. Jesus says these words. He says, ask, and it shall be given to you. He says, seek, and ye shall find. He says, knock, and it shall be opened to you. And he goes on and says, and I will open everything for you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened unto you. Our God is an unchanging God. God and Jesus follows up by saying if my father says that to you I am encouraging you to accept what the father has said ask and it shall be given unto you in John chapter 16 and verse 24 we read another wonderful um, passage of scripture John 16 24 he says this he says until now you have asked nothing in my name and he says, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. What are you lacking? What are you lacking? Are you lacking joy? Are you lacking peace? Are you lacking encouragement? Are you listening to the accusations of the enemy? John encourages us to ask. To ask. To ask. And our God is going to give. That's a promise. That's a promise. And then First John in chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. First John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15. This is what John wrote. And this is the confidence that we have toward him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked of him. 
this is how reliable and unchangeable our God is. That if we ask anything in the name of Jesus, that our God is able to give us. He promises to give us everything that we ask for that's in accordance with his will. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful word. Um, that we have from God. So therefore, friends, this morning, you and I can count on him. Why? Because he is faithful to provide for us. God is faithful to provide for us because he is an unchanging God. He is an unchanging God. He deserves your unchanging love. He deserves your unchanging loyalty. He deserves your unchanging love and hope and devotion. He deserves your unchanging service. Are you serving God? Are you serving God? Let's go to the Psalms again. Psalm, the psalmist writes in Psalm 100 and 19, Psalms 119, and we'll read a few verses, 89 through 91. These are special promises that we have from God, from verse 88. Psalm tells us, 89, forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens, your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. There's no shadow or change in or turning. Verse 91 says, For your appointment, by your appointment, they stand this day. For all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie and wait to destroy me, but I consider your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly God. What a wonderful, wonderful testimony of our God. And the Apostle Paul echoes the same thing. He says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen to the glory of God. Our Kelso Carter wrote this famous song, Standing on the Promises of God. And I like the second verse and also the fourth stanza. The second stanza says, Standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear are sealed, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. And in verse uh, four he says, Standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. We are in a season when many plans have changed suddenly. Promises have changed. Perspectives have changed. Production has changed. People have changed, but God never changes. Thanks be to God this morning that He never changes. And because He never changes, He can be trusted. This morning, know that you know, know about a God who does not change and cannot change. Are you willing to give him total control of your life? If you've been there thinking, does God really still love me after all that I've done? Yes, he still loves you. 
Will he still want me to be part of his family? Yes, he still wants you to be part of his family. So this morning, as we have our closing song, we will offer an invitation at the end of it all. So that if you desire to come to the Lord and give Him your heart, you have the opportunity to do that. Good morning, and thank you for joining the Church of Christ Oystens here in sunny Barbados. Today is a special day as we celebrate the mothers in our audience. Normally, on Mother's Day, all the restaurants are full and everyone will be taking their moms out to brunch or to dinner. In fact, if you had waited until today to try to make reservations, you would have been out of luck. Why? Because we love our mothers. Now, a word to the mothers. This passage is found in Proverbs and it accurately describes the mothers that were around when I grew up. And I'm sure that the mothers watching, it describes you as well. Proverbs 31, 25 through 31. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, and her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So honor her for all that her hands have done. It also speaks of honor in the book of Exodus, the fifth commandment. Honor your father and mother so that your days will be long. And now, a word for children, both young and old. How do you honor your mother? I have five ways I'm going to list them quickly. Number one is to forgive them. They weren't perfect, and they may have had some shortcomings, but forgive them. Number two, speak well of them. Number three, esteem them both publicly and privately. And number four, seek their wisdom. And five, support them and provide for them. Make sure you do something special for your mom today. Uh, prepare a meal, buy them a gift, or give them a call. I bet they will probably enjoy the call most of all. Amen? Amen. All right, so if you enjoyed today's service, we'll be here again next week. Same time, same place, same link. But also consider joining us for our Tuesday night Bible study at 7.30 p.m. You can find the Zoom invite on the WhatsApp Church of Christ family chat. And if you're celebrating a birthday today or this coming week, physical distancing prevents us from celebrating with you in person. But we at the Church of Christ here in Oysters want to say happy birthday. God bless you on your special day and for many, many more. And now, our benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or think or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, don't forget to like us on Facebook and to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, we're more than conquerors together. We can make it through this COVID-19 pandemic. God bless you. Have a great day and 
a wonderful week.